Now to a world space first. A Chinese lunar probe has returned to the Earth with the first ever soil and rock samples gathered from the moon's far side, largely unexplored. This was the moment the Chang'e 6 landed in the Inner Mongolia desert after a near two month long mission, which was fraught with risks. Scientists hope that the samples on board could help answer key questions about how the moon was formed and its impact wow. on life developing on Earth. The mission is a major source of pride for China, proving that it's a serious rival to the US in space. And let's speak now to Dr. Emma Gatti, former NASA scientist and editor-in-chief of Space Watch Global. Emma, very good to have you with us. Uh, I know that our viewers are really interested in stories about space. So tell us about the possible implications of this and a bit more about what these samples might reveal about the moon. Thank you, Anita. It's a pleasure to be here. So as you mentioned, there are different ways in which we can analyze this success. Uh, the first uh, is, of course, a scientific success. This is the first time humanity can uh, study the other side of the moon in details. So, so the other side of the moon, the far side of the moon, is slightly different from the side that we are used to see. It's thicker. He has been uh, uh, less bombarded by meteorites. So. This is the first time we can have the chance to understand better the evolution of the moon and also study better the asteroid belts and how meteorites work. So scientifically speaking is, as you said, a first, so is incredible. But then, yes, we should also analyze it from a political point of view, because China just did something extremely hard. It's difficult already to get samples from the moon and bring them back uh, to Earth, but sampling from the dark side of the moon, where communications are hard, where the terrain is a bit more rough, it is challenging. So if we want to analyze it from a political point of view, this is China sending a clear signal to the US, they are technologically ready, they are technologically advanced, they become a competitor. And third, I would say it's interesting also to study the international uh, collaboration. So Chang'e 6 was hosting four payloads from international uh, association and groups. They had France, they had Italy, they had Sweden, uh, and they had Pakistan. So it's also showing how science keeps collaborating even in front of uh, uh, political uh, challenges. Is it correct, though, uh, Dr. Gatti, that other countries will have to wait their turn, as it were, and wait quite a while to actually be able to look uh, at these samples themselves? So apparently it will take a while to get the samples. And what I can say is that in the 70s, during the Apollo mission, the US made available the samples almost immediately within a few months. And this might not be the case uh, from China. It might take a while before the international community can study the samples. So it's a different way from how the US handled the sample return missions, definitely. Okay, and, and the samples have to go through a period of quarantine before they can be examined, is that correct? So this is interesting. When uh, we had the Apollo mission, they did because uh, that was the first time that we actually had to handle uh, moon samples. We didn't know what we were dealing with. So when they came back in the 70s, in the end of the 60s and 70s, the samples went through a phase of quarantine. I don't think now it's strictly necessary since we know that the, the, the moon is not uh, a toxic or is not a, a dangerous environment. So I'm not sure that now they will need to stay in quarantine, but definitely in the 70s they have to. In terms of the complexity of this mission and therefore uh, the possibility of further missions to the moon, take us through that. Well, the complexity of any moon mission is extremely hard. We spoke, we discussed it several times together in the previous months of missions that fail, missions that cannot land, missions that land, but then they cannot contact. So doing something like going to the moon, landing on the moon, sampling and bringing the samples back intact, it's an incredible achievement. The States have been able to do it uh, 50 years ago, so we are now looking at China catching up, but it is catching up quickly, and the technology and the advance that is required for, for a country to reach this stage, it's a signal that this country is ready to proceed as fast as the US. So definitely the challenges are incredible. This is an incredible success. Dr. Emma Gatti, uh, Editor-in-Chief of Space Watch Global. Pleasure to talk to you. Thank you very much for your Thank time. You. Dr. Emma Gatti there.